Okay, so th- this whole story has been completely preempted by Matt Gates's already, and this happened like a couple hours ago, already legendary tweet about I won't say I won't say he has a large adult son. I will just say he has a son of equivalent size and age to him <laughs> na- named Nestor. Okay. This is what Matt Gates said this morning. He, he okay, so he tweeted a a photograph of himself. Uh they're like they're he's both wearing shades next to a man that looks to be about 35 years old. And he says, "For all those wondering, this is my son Nestor. We share no blood, but he is my life. He came from Cuba legally, of course, six years ago and lives with me in Florida. I am so proud of him and raising him has been the best, most rewarding thing I've done in my life. Okay, this just this this raises so many questions here. And then, like, like I said, this only happened a couple hours ago. And like the layers just keep being unearthed. Like the it's just like a the geographic strata of shit that's going on here is 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 still being unearthed. Um, where do you guys want to begin with Nestor, who apparently was his uh, pay, congressional page in Congress at one point? There's a video of him referring to a guy sitting in his living room as his helper, um, and just and also just the fact that the guy looks to be about thirty years old. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's might me a, a heart heart rending story about love conquering uh, age and uh, 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 language barriers, and I think that we should all celebrate it. Yeah, I like so the immediate impulse is to say human trafficking, right? <laughs> but um, I think it's probably something more sordid and weird than that because I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I would like a hearing. I would like Mr. Gas to be interrogated by the ethics committee, who asked him, ask him if he used his powers to become an uncle illegally <laughs> but um I, I don't know i feel like we're only scratching the surface like matt gets is a perfect example of what kind of person ends up in congress yeah especially on the r side it's someone who like at every stage of their life has accidentally killed a person oh um, yeah like starting in kindergarten like they accidentally shoved a pencil down someone's throat in kindergarten and that just kicked off their whole life they get duis just for fun um, there's some weird shit their parents do. In Matt Gatz's case, his parents' job is that their house was the house from the Truman Show. Oh, God. I mean, I had that next thing coming up where it's just like this thing where it's like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. We, is this all the Truman Show? Is this all just a fake fucking TV show that Matt Gates grew up in the house from the Truman Show, the movie about a guy whose life is like made up in a TV show? Hear me out here. Knowing what I know about Matt Gates, uh, I'm gonna say that this is accidental human trafficking, but he's done it multiple times. What do you guys think? I, my my well, my, I gen- mean, my genuine take on this is uh, forget it, Felix. It's Florida. Yeah. Uh, I I just found out that Matt Gates is is currently serving in Joe Scarborough's former district like, <laughs> yeah, in Congress. Like, to, to yeah, to fucking to get elected to Congress from Florida, like you, it's like you have to get. Like blooded in, you have to kill someone to, to be yeah. a politician in Florida. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't so find I'll, the idea that it's human trafficking because I mean the this the, the congressional page program being used as a way oh, for chicken hawk congressmen. Oh wow. Wait, to, another 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 guy from never Florida. Happened. Another guy yeah, from Florida using the congressional Florida page guy. program <laughs> to yeah. uh, let's say have um you know sort of I don't know crews for helpers. Matt yeah. gets. I mean. <sighs> I don't know. Like I like I said, I think that it's like they're bo- like knowing what I know about this party. Uh they're probably both scamming each other in some way and they're doing some weird thing called like uncle play. And <laughs> it's like part king community, part like cheating on your taxes. Like I said, that's like, what I would guess. Like Ashley yeah. Fabric said she's not touching this one. So, you know that yeah. there's got to be some sort of oxycontin uh dealing yeah. going on in some way i'd and say I, that if you want to understand this relationship just looking at it seeing the videos specifically seeing the video of him at his piano and introducing his helper nester uh when he did not say that he was his son he's never said he was his son before now even though there's a bunch of pictures of them together and he was but he was not a swearing in uh and when he uh got his last his last congressional uh 
term started. As far as I'm concerned, this is all explained in the classic HBO uh, film directed by Steven Soderbergh, Behind the Candelabra. <laughs> yeah, I would say that, or I would say the uh, equal epic, JFK by Oliver Stone. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, poppers this, dressing yep. up like uh, like Mercury. This is a setup like that. Yeah. Like, this is, like, there's no romance or real... It's like very 1960s style sexuality. Yeah, there's just passing like, a yeah, medicine ball back and forth. Yeah, there's, no, and it's yeah, like, yeah, there's no like, there's no mystique or like sensuality to sex. It's just like this thing you reward a guy for like having a job with. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he I mean, obviously, sex. when I, you know, when, you know, when you, when I first saw this, of course, like you know, your immediate thought is yes, human trafficking and some sort of like you know. Uh, a, a grooming going on here but it, like i think felix you're right i think what's actually happening is something even weirder than that and i think you're right that, that this is like they're both running a scam on the other person and they're both doing a scam together or like there's just something going yeah. on here where it's like it's like kink but not sexual it's, exactly it's, 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 it's just like weird, nestor like, yeah nestor is giving this guy who's only about like a decade older than him baths in exchange <laughs> for like the option to buy a smoothie king in three years in Redondo <laughs> Beach. Just scrubbing and his back with a giant loofah. <laughs> yeah. While he's they wearing have, a yeah. bathing costume, yeah, a two piece bathing costume. They they're both like they both wake up every day and bathe and bathe in a claw foot bathtub like the three stooges. And they're yeah. both like, Oh, I'm getting such a good deal out of this. I will say when someone turned up uh, Matt Matt Getz's uh, Venmo history where it's just like he gets requests and it's just like, Hey, this is Nestor. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, okay, I mean, whatever, you know, like if I had a son who was like two years younger than me, he'd probably be hitting me up for fucking money all the time too. This is just what, what fucking, this is what 30 year old men are like. You know, anyone yeah, who lives with yeah. one knows that, you know, that's what it's like to be live with a 30 year old man. Yeah. I, and like, also like, like, if you're, if you're out there listening and you're like 26, 27 and you want to be my son just so I can win an argument, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, we will be taking applications yeah, starting yeah. right immediately as this episode uh, airs. Send yes. your applications to be our son to <laughs> chopo trap house at gmail.com. This and could I, be a TV sorry, show. It, Fuck the touch the bachelor. It could be the oh, uncle. Oh, oh, yeah. a, t a TV show. You mean what? Like the Truman show and the house that Matt Gates grew up in. Yes, that's a, that's awesome. Like I can only imagine the weird politics of the Florida shithole that they live in, <laughs> but it probably was like the deal with like the local GOP was probably like, well, we have to let him be the congressman because his parents have the Truman show house. <laughs> Like well, that's he, probably literally what fucking happened. Uh, you know, he, 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 Matt Gatz's dad was a Florida state senator, Don Gatz. And in addition to multiple DUIs, you know, I mentioned this on the show before, but if you just Google Matt Gates freshman roommate, um, there, there's 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 some stuff there, shall we say? I mean, he had a his freshman roommate at Florida State University uh, turned up dead in their dorm room under suspicious circumstances, and. The Florida, like the, the the local police, were initially investigating it as a homicide, but uh, the they were like the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. See, apparently, under political pressure from Matt's dad, Don, hastily ruled it a suicide. So, I mean, I think he was like maybe he did that like that that sort of urban legend scam about if your freshman roommate commits suicide, you like get like straight A's for the semester. He saw that movie with uh, yeah, Dead Man on Campus. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> with what's his name from Saved by the Bell, and yeah. And then he killed the guy, to, Paul Costler. Yeah, to um, to get out of going to class at Florida State University, uh, and also like the, just the original quote here, like the language in it is so funny. Where he just says, um, "We share no blood, but he is my life." Uh, uh, it's just like, uh, I mean, like I, I mean, that just makes me think they literally are sharing blood. <laughs> yeah, so maybe, not maybe, by relation, but through some method. Maybe he's doing the Peter Thiel thing. He's getting yeah. like the youth, the youth infusion, so that he can uh, he can make sure that he can be getting de deadly DUIs into his hundred and twenties. Yeah, I mean, more power to him. Uh, he, DUIs are one of the only rights actually enumerated in the Bill of Rights. <laughs> but uh, no, um, you know, like we said, Ashley Feinberg said she's who will touch this. Uh, Nestor. Besides us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, it involves it really looking into it would involve going to Florida. So that's, that's a big fine. hurdle. That's fine. Although that I is like, I like I like going to Florida. Well, that is where the convention is going to be now. They moved it from Charlotte because the governor there won't guarantee that they're going to let them all cough into each other's mouths on the floor. <laughs> 
So, of course, they're going to Florida. So I'll be there. And while I'm there, I'm getting to the bottom of Nestor Gate. Yeah, we should all just go. Fuck yeah. it. Who can we, cares? Can, can I don't we Airbnb, care if I die. Can, can we Airbnb the, the house you grew up in, the Truman Show house? I would love to go to the that Truman Show awesome. house, which apparently has a fucking plaque on the fence that just says the Truman Show house. <laughs> <laughs> Another normal day for some totally uh, normal people. I'm glad they represent us. Our normalist know, humans representing us. That, in that is representative of like the place. It's they true, live, probably. Yes. Like to be the honest, text, the fucking Florida Panhandle, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just a bunch um, of uh, a bunch of uh, fail sons, just drunk driving jeeps into each other at 120 yeah, miles an hour. Every 10 years, kill somebody by accident or yeah. accidentally steal them from another country. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he just did this as a because this all started because he got owned by uh, a Democrat in Congress about how you, you you can't talk about what it's like to have black kids living with police brutality because you don't raise black children. You don't raise non-white children. And his response was actually this mysterious Cuban man who lives in my house <laughs> is my adopted son. My son. Don't you look like an idiot. And what's OK? Also, <laughs> just that concept uh, okay, you first of all, you've got the classic Mr. Show sketch of the adopted son, where like they, David yes. Cross is like the adult man that they adopt. Yes, and, like, yes, like, yes. They, they come over with the video camera, and he's just like drinking beer on their fucking sofa, like being surly. <clears throat> Listen, can we send this guy back? Send him back. This is our new son. I don't care. If you haven't noticed, this guy's a real asshole. <laughs> Come on, Dad. I didn't ask to be born. And wasn't this a... I, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't this a plot line on 30 Rock where Tracy like attempts to like adopt a man as, as his kid? It's something? a guy who, pre, who who is scamming him that he is his, uh, his illegitimate son. But oh, he is okay. older, he is older than, than Tracy is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like I said... Life forget, a movie. <laughs> for, forget, forget it, Jake. Um, so to circle back around to where I originally wanted to start this show. Uh, Matt Gates went at Ron Perlman because Ron Perlman is like, you know, he he he's a Twitter lib, but uh, I I would say he's one of the realer ones, you know. Like I I I always fuck with uh with Ron Perlman because you know he is like on some on that vote blue tip, but he's also like, hey 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 Don, I, I hope your kids get AIDS or something. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. He's so like, so every other Twitter lib now like they all got MK Ultra brain poisoning and they're all like Chris Evans and they're like. Hey guys, sign my petition that tells the White House that newspapers are important. <laughs> but like, Rob Roman remembers what celebrities are supposed to be, which is stupid. And hit like, just like I love Ice Cube. Like, yeah, Rob Perlman is like, I wish I could go back in time and kill your mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's awesome. Like, good. You're gonna do and, that. Do it. And that it just. Way. I have to He's a genius. Like, Remember when Peter Fonda threatened to put. Uh, Put Baron in a cage before he died. <laughs> Peter Fonda, the last like month before he died, he was like, "What if somebody raped Baron?" <laughs> <laughs> it's from an earlier generation. It's before they got all the fluoride. It's before yeah, they got yeah. all the fucking uh, soy. People over sixty are immune to MK Ultra poisoning. Yep, it's true. Yeah. So uh, I, 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 just, I just have to bring it up because, you know, like Sons of Anarchy is, you know, it's, it's, a, th it's a thread that like is, yeah, the foundation of this show. And it was like, I, you know, I, I forget what he, he said to Matt Gates, but he was, you know, he was he, he was he was spitting some fire. And Matt Gates uh, replied where he says, uh, blue check marks don't scare me any more than your fictional white supremacy motorcycle gang. Leave the tough guy comments for those of us who face the voters. And I just I, I'm sorry. I have to correct the record here. Facts matter, sir. The Sons of Anarchy Rebel Motorcycle Club, Redwood Original. Yes, according to their original charter and bylaws, could not ever accept a black member. However, that was changed by the end of the series when uh, Jax rewrote the rules of the group so that they could make a, a, a uh, the former leader of the all-black motorcycle club, the Grim Bastards, a full patch of Sons of Anarchy, after the Sons of Anarchy, of course, got all of it, the other black bikers killed by, I don't know, the Chinese, the IRA, yeah, and yeah. Hotel at the same ah, time. damn it. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh no. Probably, no. Yes. probably for a net profit of $40. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. for zero, but just no uh, gain. Yeah, but, like, uh, like, like, Jax got all of the Grim Bastards killed in, like, a, like a scratch-off lottery uh, shootout gone wrong. Um, so, and, like, so, yes... The Sons of Anarchy, look, there, there are no SJ dubs, all right? But if you're, you know, if you care about the facts, sir, 
you will know that the Sons of Anarchy has long done Antifa praxis against actual white supremacist groups like the AB and Henry Rollins and Adam Arkin and uh, uh, the Nords, the Nordic uh, <laughs> Nazi gang uh, led by Mitch Pileggi of the X-Files. So yeah, we we should I mean, Matt Katz displaying a lack of knowledge of Sons of Anarchy and Sam Crow. We could actually primary him now. Absolutely. Yep. This man is like disgraced yeah. the proud American tradition of guys yeah. who murder each other for ten dollars. Yeah. No, I mean he calling Sam Crow a white supremacist is insane. But um we will be going to Florida first to investigate like his his nephew ring. Uh, <laughs> also for the RNC, <laughs> but also to primary Matt Gass and okay. all three of us to share a con- congressional right. seat. So it, it's it's Sam Crow. They're at their they're at the clubhouse table. They need they need to get a vote on something. You got Clay at the front. You've got Bobby Elvis. You've got Chibs. You've got Jax, the VP. They're like, listen, we got to do a deal to get out of guns and get into trafficking nephews. But first, we got <laughs> first we got to cover our asses with the cartel and the yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, Jax and his like shitty accent that always slips back into Australian. Like, I don't know. But my dad said that nephews are a bad business to be in. <laughs> Says any time anyone who moves major nephews in California gets pinched by ATF. <laughs> yeah, like, don't worry, don't worry, moving, don't worry, don't worry, Jax. Moving nephews is easier than moving anything else. I, I move nephews in and out of Vietnam with your dad. <laughs> These new shipping containers. That's what paid for this. That's what paid for. That's what paid for Teller Moro. Teller Moro automotive was nephew. The nephew trade. The nephew the trade. Mekong Delta. Wait, and now, now I'm you imagining. I'm sorry. I'm now imagining Matt Gatz and Nestor. Whereas everyone's like, okay, wait, what the fuck? Like, how, how all of a sudden this guy is his son after being previously referred to as a local student and page, and then a helper. Look, he was he was a prospect then. Just this week, he got the full patch of Sun. Yeah. So that means he killed 78 people <laughs> and earned the club, which is just him and Matt Gatz, $420. Yeah. Minus expenses. That was they so accidentally so ship all the nephews to little St. James. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Who was looking at this dude. bill of lading? <laughs> okay, you know what? Dude, Kurt Sutter, Kurt Sutter, if you're out there, we, you know, you must know, you must understand that we are your biggest fans and supporters. You have to, I, I know you were fired from doing the Mayans MC show because of, you know, because you're too smart. You're too much. Because he was too fucking real. He's too fucking oh, yeah. real for these suits. I, I, we don't like these Hollywood pussies either, Kurt. We, I, I hate them. I'm with Kurt Sutter. We need him back on television, and he needs to do a show about the Florida nephew uh, ring. Dude, ne- you know we get Kurt, Kurt Sutter back into show running a top five TV show, a Biden presidency. Oh, yeah. That'd be good. Kurt Sutter thrives under Democratic presidents. <laughs> that would be like Jax Teller being president. Yeah. Like with another 40 years of, uh, of CTAE and uh, like meth use. Well, if you think about it, all those Democratic plans are like, if you open a small business in a black, a majority black neighborhood and you got a Pell Grant, blah, blah, they're as convoluted and shitty as any Sam Crow. Plan. It's true. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. We're going to solve racism. All right. All, we're going to take all the black nephews out of the black neighborhoods and we're going <laughs> to we're going to ship them to the white neighborhoods and do a nephew exchange program. <laughs> but but to do that, we have to. Um, we ha- OK, to get into the nephew trade. We're going to have to do a deal with the Chinese, which means going to war with the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. We, is the one thing we didn't want to do was go to war with uh, the anarchists. I know we're supposed to be sons of anarchy, but like we just have to do this deal to go legit and get into the get into the nester business. <laughs> Gotta well, get like, into those nesters. You, oh, we, 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 I, I would. I love. Ne- I would love a nester. Yeah, who would? <laughs> who wouldn't want to uh, nest the nester? Uh, <laughs> just a, a helpful young man who hangs out while you tinkle on the ivories. Yeah, I, I'm two years older than him, so I have a lot of life experience and wisdom yeah. to impart yeah, to him. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, hang out by the pool bowl. Oh man. Um. So just, I, I, I do want to get into this because, like, okay. So Ron Perlman said of Matt Gatz that I thought Jim Jordan was the ugliest guy in Congress until I saw your face or something like that, <laughs> which is like. Totally true, by the way. Because I, I was, I was looking Matt at photos. Hideous. hideous. I was looking at photos of Matt Gatz's like bizarre. Uh, someone on Twitter today said that he looks like he tried to get plastic surgery to look like Jim Harbaugh, but went to like the cheapest doctor he could find. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, that sums it up. And I was just thinking, like, like pondering Matt Gatz. 
is like I remember like the the crop of like right wing congressmen that I was obsessed with and of like the Bush era guys like Tom DeLay, Jim Sensenbrenner, just like fucking gargoyle like freaks who have now all gone away and been replaced by this like the young guns, this new crop of like younger, even stupider, even more grotesque looking men. Yeah, it rules. It, it is. It's, it's, it's a real uh, devolution. So anyway, Ron Perlman calling Matt Gatz ugly. Raise the ire of Ted Cruz, who, who, who writes here, Listen, Hellboy, you talk a good game, but you've got Hollywood makeup and stuntmen. I'll bet 10K to the non-political charity of your choice that you couldn't last five minutes in the wrestling ring with Jim Jordan without getting pinned. You up for it, or does your publicist say too risky? I'll just point out that Ron Perlman is 70 years old. <laughs> and, and Ted Cruz, why would you bring up wrestling in conjunction with Jim Jordan? Why would you want to remind people of the fact that he was the wrestling coach at the Ohio State University program when like every single kid on that team was getting their asshole fingered by like the team doctor? Yeah, who, he covered yeah. that shit up. Graham Spanier of fucking Ohio State. But I mean, again, like this is the last thing I wanted to mention about this is like Felix said it immediately. I, I don't think if I tried to, I could write anything funnier or more Ted Cruz like than being like t tough guy talk on Twitter to be like, mm, hell boy, like you won't be so tough without the right hand of doom and your stone hand uh, and Hollywood makeup. Why don't you wrestle my friend for $10,000 while I watch? <laughs> yeah, like it is a baffling, a, a baffling exchange, a baffling exchange on all part, but like especially from Ted Cruz's end, like a, for a grown man to be like, fight my other friend who's also 60. <laughs> is mind numbing. And again, uh, credit credit to Ron Perlman for immediately re replying, being like, "What kind of motherfucker asked someone to wrestle and fight his friend?" <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Ron. Yeah. Uh, this, this is like, I guess the theme for today is just the collapse of America. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's, yeah well, it's, been, yeah. it's been the theme of the show for a long time now. Yeah, I guess so. But you know what? More positively. You know, here at Chapo, we uphold Ron. We uphold Ron Perlman in all his endeavors. One of my longtime favorite character actors, but ultimately, we up, we uphold and practice Kurt Sutter thought. Kurt yes. Sutter practice yeah, and huge, thought, yeah. like like he that is who we we must hew to in the in these tough times is like the the ideology okay. and and political action of the genius Kurt Sutter. This is where you come to for the fully unauthorized, exhaustive, unabridged defense of Matt Gates's <laughs> behavior from the left. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even know where to begin with this one. I mean, obviously, this, this all started when the New York Times um, wrote an article about allegations that he has, a, has been engaging in a sexual relationship with a 17-year-old girl that he has been paying to travel across state lines, which is technically human trafficking. But uh, I don't know, just the I, the, the thing I can't get out of my head about this is, uh, Felix, something you said to me yesterday about Matt Gates as a politician and a personality that 70 percent like deserves to be executed, but 30 percent deserves to be president of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Because like he m vast majority like should go to prison and be beheaded. <laughs> but he's also like so many people in America are just like him. Like this, I'm pretty sure people know like the broad strokes of the case. Like I was, so you know the thing about blackmailing, right? Like the the, the Iran, Iran the Iran. Host okay, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get into the many many strains yeah. of the. Oh, but this, he's this case like, here. yeah, he's exactly as like stupid and disgusting and weird and gross as like only a type of American can be. Not to say that we're the grossest people, but a French person would be disgusting in a different way. There's something about like a, I mean, we can talk about the Harry Potter based sex game that he played yeah. with fellow Florida state representatives. We can talk about the Bitcoin mining rig that burned down a public <laughs> building because of the Seminole <laughs> County tax collector, who's also a child pornographer and human trafficker, who's the, invest the, the investigation into him is what uncovered Matt Gates's relationship with this teenager in the first place. We could talk about uh, the fact that he grew up in the house that the Truman Show was filmed in. Uh, there's uh, it just it goes on and on with this guy. But I mean, like is never before in political scandals is has there been one that's been l like less surprising? 
Uh, yeah, no, that guy's had a. I mean, he literally looks like fucking Quagmire from <laughs> Family Guy. Like, like he is a a human version of that the cartoon known for being a pervert. Yeah, and also he has like seventy thousand tweets from like a year or two ago where it's like. I think it's cool to fuck high schoolers. <laughs> like, <laughs> like almost like directly that. Like almost like it was. Uh, so, there are just so. It many was the quote tweeted. It was somewhere when I I was like just briefly reading on him the other day, and everyone knows he voted against the human trafficking bill. But he also uh, in 2015 when he was in the Florida House was the only vote against like making revenge porn illegal. <laughs> No, the, what everyone like, saw was like it was a, the tweet was like you can be sexy at any age, which first of all, uh, no, not true, no, <laughs> it's and, uh, untrue. And then he quote retweeted me saying, uh, "This should be the official motto of the state of Florida." I mean, that's the other. That's the other thing to this is is that Florida, as a state and as a state of mind, figures very largely in this story as well. Because I mean, I, it's hard to imagine. Like Matt Gates could not have come out of any place other than Florida. I think there's like equivalents to Matt Gates, like in every state, who would do something as stupid and awful and just be as emblematic of their state, but it's in different ways. But he is like, he should at least be a senator now. Like he's for Florida. Like if like you're gonna have senators from that place, it should be like he's earned it. Yeah, I mean, one of their. Senators now is a guy who was the largest ever Medicare fraudster. That makes yeah. sense. As would Gates. Yeah. No, that's that's who it is. Like a completely hairless, like demon creature, and then <laughs> the dumbest man alive. And then also, oh, it's another thing. Um, he just got engaged to a woman named Ginger Lucky. <laughs> and where has Nestor been in all of this? Where is where is I would Nestor? like to hear from Nestor because I mean I think. I mean, like, obviously, like, uh, we all thought when the Nestor story broke, like, it was, you know, that was going in a different direction in terms of, you know, human trafficking and his um, predilections, shall we say. But now I think it's sort of like the Nestor thing is I think he adopted, like, a cool 19-year-old so that he could hope he could hook up with high school girls. I, I think it was, like, his way for him to meet young women or, or yeah, underage women. Well, I, I, think the, I think the place to begin is what really, what really kicked this off as, as just a just an unbelievable news spectacle is Matt Gates's appearance on Tucker Carlson's show the other week. And I just want to go through a couple clips of what might be the greatest TV news interview of all time. So let, let's, let's, let's cue up that first uh, Tucker Carlson, Matt Gates uh, clip. Congressman, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, so this is obviously a serious allegation. Tell us what the truth is from your perspective. It is a horrible allegation and it is a lie. The New York Times is running a story that I have traveled with a 17 year old woman and that is verifiably false. People can look at my travel records and see that that is not the case. What is happening is an extortion of me and my family involving a former Department of Justice official. On March 16th, my father got a text message demanding a meeting wherein a person demanded $25 million in exchange for making horrible sex trafficking allegations against me go away. Our family was so troubled by that, we went to the local FBI. And the FBI and the Department of Justice were so concerned about this attempted extortion of a member of Congress that they asked my dad to wear a wire, which he did <laughs> okay, all right, with all right. the former Department Wasn't of there. Justice Wasn't official. There. Okay, can I say what I think happened? Go for it. So the guy was like, um, you have to give me $25 million so like we can pardon this guy. We well, can get this guy out of Iran, and then if you do it, we'll get it so Biden – pardons you for having sex with a 17 year old. But what I think happened is the guy was like, told him all this. And Gates was like, Oh my God, I'm so behind. I need to sleep with the 17 year old. To <laughs> yeah. Get, to get this rolling. Yeah. yeah and then no, he like, did it. And then he was like, all right, now I'm being extorted. <laughs> so yeah. So like, okay. So some background on, on the uh, extortion plot that he's talking about here. It says, um, uh, Matt Gates is from the Washington Post here. Matt Gates, a Florida Republican known for his fierce allegiance to former President Donald Trump, had been under Justice Department investigation for months for a possible sex crime when two men approached his father with a proposal. The men had learned of the investigation, they wrote to Don Gates, and wanted to offer an opportunity to help his son. 
he could give a huge sum of money to fund their effort to locate Robert A. Levinson, the longest held American hostage in Iran, whose family has said that they were told he is dead. If the operation were a success, he would win public favor and help alleviate Matt Gates's legal woes. The men who approached Don Gates, people familiar with the matter said, had no apparent connection to the sex crime investigations of his son, other than having somehow learned about it before it was publicly reported. But when news of law enforcement's interest in Gates surfaced, the congressman asserted that the allegation was rooted in an ex extortion effort against my family for $25 million. So, yeah, I, I think Felix. So these guys, these guys come to him and they're like, listen, you help us. <laughs> you help us rescue a dead man from Iran <laughs> and we won't um, blow the whistle on you having sex with a uh, 17 year old girl. And then Matt Gates was just like, you fool. Do you honestly think I would uh, let you in on my master plan without having already done it? I had sex with a 17-year-old girl 30 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, How can you be extorting me for a crime I've already committed? <laughs> um, and I also yeah. like that, the detail about like somehow they had uh, knowledge of this investigation before it was made public. I mean, I think they had, acknowledge they had knowledge of it just because they're from Florida and no Matt Gates. No, yeah. I, I, I don't think like it took any special insight to divine what was going on. Um, I also really like in in the, right, right off the get go from that Tucker interview, we're like, you know, you cannot pick a a softer interview from Matt Gates than Tucker Carlson, who's like, you know, like setting him up to be like, oh, like, you know, how how is how is the liberal media persecuting you this time, Matt? And uh, his answer to the question was like, <laughs> let's just say very legally worded in that he's just like, I have never traveled anywhere with a 17 year old. You can check my travel schedule. But, you know, he didn't say I have never had sex with a 17 year old or had been in a sexual relationship with someone underage in an illegal, <laughs> I've never been in an illegal sex. And also isn't, isn't the, the case that he was paying her to travel and that he wasn't traveling with her. He was just paying for her to come to uh, where he was to have sex with her. Yeah. It was like a tee ball and he went to swing and his pants fell down and the ball like went up his urethra somehow. <laughs> oh man. And then, like, just the, the the Iran hostage thing is such a funny. And then, and then his dad wearing a wire. It's like, uh, Felix, you also say, like, this is just like the the best kind of conspiracy, criminal or otherwise, is one in which every single person involved has like seventy IQ. I mean, this is what a lot of history is: just the dumbest person from five different families working together to do. I don't even think they know what they're doing. I also love the idea that, like, according to this extortion plot if he had helped free this guy who's apparently dead, then Joe Biden would pardon him for sex crimes. Like that doesn't seem like a, a thing that would happen. I think it like I could, if you brought Joe Biden a corpse <laughs> and he's like, ah, I've been looking for this <laughs> and uh, you're no longer a pedophile. All right, wonder, wonder, cue, up that, cue up that second Tucker clip, because he gets better. And I believe we are in an era of our politics now, Tucker, where people are smeared to try to take them out of the conversation. I'm not the only person on screen right now who's been falsely accused <laughs> of a terrible <laughs> sex act. You were accused of something that you did not do, and so Nailed you it. know what this feels like. You know the pain it can bring to your family, and you know how it, it just puts people on defense when you're accused of something so salacious and awful, but it did not happen. It is not true. All right. So just 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 absolutely stitching up Tucker Carlson, referring to some something that happened. I I had never heard of this. This was like years ago, and it was like uh like one of his mentally ill viewers believed that they had a sexual relationship and then accused him of impropriety in it. But like you know, uh, let's just say like that those allegations were slightly less founded than the ones being made against Matt Gates. But like I just love Tucker the look. First of all, Tucker Carlson always has like an interview face where he looks like a golden retriever. Like a, like like the golden retriever where you're like holding a treat above its nose and he's waiting for it to drop or something. Um, That's like, how he shows you that he's paying attention. Yeah, but like he, he just like he like he got extra sort of like his his mouth like his little lips and and eyes got even more pursed as soon as Matt Gates was just like, listen, I'm not the only one on screen here, and the other guy on screen being you, Tucker Carlson, who's been <laughs> accused of sexual sex crimes against children. Maybe he was talking about like the news ticker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone falsely accused the news ticker of sexual harassment at his job. He was harassing the Fox logo. I, I totally uh, condemn the uh, accusations against Cletus, the dancing robot. <laughs> <laughs> it could be like maybe like he did like, he, yeah, he didn't mean Tucker because like 
Matt Gates just like superimposes cartoon characters in the background of everyone he's talking to. Gr- like Grimace was there. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm going on Grimace and Tucker. <laughs> that show everyone knows. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see the next uh, Tucker clip. You know, again, I, I I really saw this as a deeply troubling challenge for my family on March 16th when people were, you know, talking about a, a minor and that there were pictures of me with child prostitutes. What's up? Uh, that's obviously <laughs> false. There were you know, no one even, pictures. No, no one mentioned that, happened. dude. Um, no one mentioned Really, on that. March 16th was when this got going uh, from the extortion standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> <This guy's going laughs> from the extortion standpoint but like yeah that, i mean that see that's a, that's a, you you think that's bad but that is an alpha move you throw more accusations out there to confuse people it's it's like squid ink it's it's actually it's it's advanced yeah I mean, no no one had there is nothing about the pictures or anything and he's like that the guy in the video doesn't even really look like me <laughs> we have the same tattoo and weird jaw, but it's actually not even me, which is what's so crazy about this thing. Oh, yeah, I mean, he is on some real Yellow King shit. And, like, to the extent that, like, okay, um, what are we to make of these allegations against someone like Matt Gates? Well, I mean, why don't we uh, view them in light of the, like, numerous, like, the, the lengthy reporting that's been done on the fact that he has, as a legislature, as, as a legislator in Florida and now in Congress, um, apparently shares photos of naked women that um, he has on his phone with fellow um, congressmen and representatives. He's, he's the kind of guy that likes doing that. And uh, in, in the best detail of this story is apparently in, in, in the Florida state government, him and uh, a bunch of his friends played what was reportedly a Harry Potter themed sex game with each other. And by that, I mean that they like they they it was like one of the this like stupid guy thing where like you score like based on like the the number of women you have sex with or like the circumstances in which you have sex with them and uh it was like you got points uh one of the one of the point one of the like the uh the the rating systems for like how many points you would accrue is was waking up in a sorority like what like fucking ted bundy or something (laughs) (laughs) i have to say the funniest outcome like it would not be like if this is all true the funniest outcome would be if like he's actually right and he is being framed, and it's like he just did the shittiest job ever. <laughs> just, like this is how he responded to it. He's just got a guy who's guilty of so much stuff that like he can't yeah. help but look guilty like all the fucking time. Yeah. And then okay, so like it, it was it was a, a Harry Potter based sex game that was just based on Quidditch, and like this is the worst part about it because this is like guys who think they're awesome. These guys are like thinking like. Oh, like you know, this is the put. This is the pussy getting posse. You know, we all oh, we're the coolest guys ever. And then, and these are all guys in their thirties, in their fucking thirties. And if you're like, if, if your friends are still impressed by you having sex in your thirties, it's like it's because none of you have ever had sex before. If you're like, if you're high fiving your friends, you're like, guess you got laid last night I, on my thirty eighth birthday, dude. Woo! <laughs> and then that's so why they went into politics. Yeah, Dude, that kind of is like. The federal House of Representatives is for people who couldn't have a job anywhere else. The state house is for people who couldn't have sex anywhere else. <laughs> yes. Like, even less functional. Yeah. Um, but a, a feature of the Harry Potter, it was, it was based on Quidditch. Like, that's how fucking lame these guys are. Like, that, that, just in addition to being criminals. This is how fucking lame they are. It was, it was, it was, it was based on Quidditch because apparently uh, there, there was one woman who was a, a married uh, all, a fellow politician in Florida, and it, it wasn't named. She wasn't named in any of the uh, reporting, thank God. But apparently, if you had sex with her, she was the quote snitch, which means that it would like automatically win the game, no matter how many points anyone else had accrued for themselves. If you betted this one woman, um, then you won the game. So I mean, like th- this is the mentality here, and I okay, like let's let's, let's an, another el- another element of the Matt Gates story is that that this. This allegation about him and this 17-year-old girl only came to light because of another ongoing investigation into this guy, Joel Greenberg, who, like I said, was a, he, he was like some sort of tax collector, or tax, sort of tax official, tax collector from Seminole County, Florida, with close ties to Matt Gates. Um, just a, just a, a bit from this story here. This is from Gizmodo. 
Uh, during a 2020 audit of his spending during his time as Seminole County's tax collector, investigators found that Greenberg had prepaid $65,860 to an entity called Government Blockchain Systems, LLC, which his office was the sole member of. <laughs> when questioned is, about... <laughs> oh, I, I have to say, you were talking about conspiracy of 70 IQ people. This guy was like, oh, the government can't prosecute me for child porn if I call my company the government. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of it. Um, when they have to hire me, and then I make double the money. Um, when questioned about why such an LLC existed in the first place, Greenberg told auditors that he had been creating a new method for his office to, quote, accept cryptocurrency as payments. Yeah, that's a cryptocurrency as payment. So like, yeah, you, you heard that rightly. He was trying to figure out a way that you could pay your taxes in Florida in Bitcoin. And like, so that you could go from having paid like X amount of uh, taxes. And then like two weeks later, you paid twice as much in taxes. That sounds great. Wonderful idea. Florida prosecutors are apparently not buying those claims about a new payment system. And on Wednesday, filed a second superseding indictment against Greenberg for embezzling $400,000 to purchase cryptocurrency for himself, wire fraud, and bribery. In addition to his first indictment, which included charges of harassment and stalking a political opponent, and his first superseding incident, which included one charge of human trafficking, several charges of aggravated, aggravated identity theft, and misuse of driver's license info, uh, Greenberg is now facing a total of 33 charges. Um, Another interesting uh, thing to the, the uh, blockchain LLC is that um, he built with, with this money a Bitcoin mining rig that overheated and burned down a government building or caused fire damage to a government building. And I mean, by all accounts, he was using this Bitcoin shit for uh, child pornography and human trafficking. What, wait a minute. Bitcoin <laughs> used for child pornography? That doesn't sound right. Yeah, that's that, The other like funny thing about paying your taxes in Bitcoin is like, Taxes, that's the, if you hide your identity in anything, that's it. You want to be totally anonymous when paying your taxes. <laughs> you don't want the government. You don't want the know. government to know that you're the one paying those taxes. Yeah. <laughs> so they keep asking you for them. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's uh, one more, one more Tucker clip. I think. Again, I only know what I've read in the New York times. Uh, I can say that actually you and I went to dinner uh, about two years ago. Your wife was there and I brought a friend of mine. You'll remember her. And she was actually <laughs> threatened by the FBI, told that if she wouldn't cop to the fact that somehow I was involved in some pay for play scheme, uh, that she could face trouble. And so uh, I do believe that there are people at the Department of Justice who are trying to smear me, uh, you know, providing for flights uh, and hotel rooms for people that you're dating who are of legal age is not a crime. Uh, and I'm just troubled that the lack of any sort of legitimate uh, investigation into me would then permute, would then convert into this extortion attempt. I, I, I don't remember the, the woman you're speaking of or the context at all, honestly. But I, uh... Oh, my God. He's just trying to fucking... He's just trying to get. He's trying to get some co-defendants in this yeah. <laughs> trial here. So, you know Tucker, I mean? we fucked the same girl. Remember? <laughs> remember, we were both wearing those goat masks. It was in that uh, that chapel underneath the, the the Capitol building. Tucker, there's a young man that we both know. His name is Ami Dalla, and he's a great one. And remember, we brought that sixth grader to him, <laughs> and he consumed it and birthed another great one. Do you remember that, Tucker? Tucker. You're at the blood ceremony. Moloch actually called me about this, <laughs> about what the FBI is doing to me. Uh, Chris, what's the thing about um, Matt Gates's father being involved in some horrible tragedy or like a causing one? Okay, yeah. Um, Gates's grandfather, Stanley Jerome Jerry Gates, was the mayor of Rugby, North Dakota, and a candidate for lieutenant governor in North Dakota at the 1964 North Dakota Republican State Party convention. And he apparently like died of a heart attack during a speech. <laughs> He's from a uh, my my family's been here a long time. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No, it just it, that's why Gates should be president. Like grandfather dies of a speech during a convention. Uh, dad is like, we're leaving this place. There's a bad energy. We're gonna move into the Truman Show house. <laughs> and then the son is who he is. And that's like, you know. Should serve life in prison while also being like a representative figure, like in a, not royal family, but like mascot. Like if you come from another country to to 
not just Florida's fourth house district, but like pretty much any of it. It's like you get to meet him and like take pictures of with him. And then he has to go back to his cell and we have to end the bloodline. Some, some more, some more highlights here from uh, Joel Greenberg. I mean, he was a, uh, uh, a, a much beloved uh, subject of uh, Central Florida uh, journalism. This is just like a collection of headlines about Joel Greenberg that uh, someone collected. Uh, Seminole County tax collector accused of impersonating police officer. Tax collector indicted, charged with stalking. Uh, feds, Greenberg regularly stole IDs. <laughs> <laughs> Seminole tax collector Joel Greenberg accused of soliciting hacker to attack county computers. Seminole tax collector Joel Greenberg asked for professional courtesy after ticketed for speeding. Uh, Joel Greenberg resigns as Seminole County tax collector. <laughs> I he was just getting started. That's bullshit. He was forced out. Greenberg pleads not guilty to trafficking. Accused of state. <laughs> accused of using state beta database to look up minors. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's just like, it's just fucking like, just like it's this guy, Cuomo, it's just like everyone who's involved in politics who's a man is like a fucking absolute just like sex freak. These guys should be all be chemically castrated if they want to seek office. Well, why yeah. would you run for office now? Like at this point, you know, if you have a brain of any kind, not even a significantly good one, that you're not going to do anything like all of the traditional reasons to run for office don't exist. The only reason is to do not even power fantasies because there's no power there. Just like sick performance of power. You're just a little pervert. You have to be. Yeah, I think like for someone like Joe Biden, you get elected because, you know, you get to do more handshakes. Like his favorite part of the whole deal. Yeah, he just loves going to pancake breakfasts. Yeah, pancake breakfasts. Uh, You know, you got to take the syrup home sometimes. Yeah, he loves people like having to listen to him. But yeah, for someone like Matt Gates, that's what this is. I mean, I, I I feel like we've only like scratched the surface of like this guy's life and his life in crimes. But uh, what, what do you think? Is there anything more here? I'm I'm looking forward to him being uh, exonerated. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's the thing to say is that it need, must be uh, remembered that he will not go anywhere unless he is actually charged and indicted in some way. Uh, he's not going anywhere. He will probably st- he'll be there in in that office uh, till he wants to leave until he yeah. gets killed in some sort of like hot air ballooning uh, with a crocodile accident. He'll be the first person over the age of like three to die by jamming a fork into an electrical outlet, <laughs> <laughs> or one of those like jet ski accidents where you fall off the back and the jet blows your fucking asshole out of your mouth or something. Oh yeah, no. However, Matt Gates dies, he's going to be vaporized. <laughs> Oh, 100%. Like, there's a, like no no casket at that funeral. Like he's just going to be a fucking pile of red mist. That's not a guy who has like you know dies alone in his bed or surrounded by his family or like you know gets shot or something. It's like that's a guy who's like driving an experimental boat. Yeah, no, he's going to uh, he's going to like be doing a TikTok dance into the back of a fan boat and just get <laughs> dissolved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. That great, yeah. <laughs> that grandfather who had the heart attack at the convention, that's like the last member of the Gates family who had like an open casket funeral. It was nothing but ignominious deaths after that. I, I just like, I guess like the last thing I want to say is like the other, the other interesting uh, angle to this is the sort of the, uh, uh, like his fellow Trumpists and sort of like, uh, like the neo-Nazi fucking like the online people uh, have, have sort of like taken up his case as just like, uh, like basically defending him by saying even if the allegations are true, he did nothing wrong because there's nothing wrong with like a 38 year old man having a sexual relationship with a 17 year old because like that's what they did in Europe in the in the grand old times of Western civilization. And then like what one of the was was that that fucking like that that little neo Nazi rat was just like um, I'm I'm concerned with the real child abuse that's being done by elites. And I was just like, how old do you think Epstein's victims were? Like, what the fuck? Like, what, like, what are you talking about here? Are they just keep talking about how, like, um, you know, like, uh, it's, it's a technically not a crime. And it's just like, yeah, like, if he was 23 at the time, like, there are, there are sliding scales for, like, the, the age difference here sort of matters in terms of the law. Then the age of consent in Florida is 18. But he was in his 30s, apparently, when this was happening. It's just like a good percentage of, like, the online right is obsessed with the idea of like like uh, like sort of ferreting out degeneracy in other people's and uh, other people and i think to them degeneracy means having a normal sexual relationship with an adult that's not like paid for in any way 
I think that that to them is like the most sickening thing that they can imagine. Like that that's what that is what true perversion is. Like like guys who have you know, uh, like child anime avatars who are fucking obsessed with the idea that like gay people are, are, are some sort of like irredeemable perverts or something like that. Well, yeah, a relationship that's that's that has like an equivalent power uh, dynamic is no good. It's all. Yeah, it's the Yellow King. They need to be like sexual conquerors because just like their their ancestors. I mean, that is the weird thing with all of this is like this is exactly like. You know, this is exactly like a Democrat would do this. Like, they all do the same thing, just with, like, different details. Like, with Gates, it involves, like, some fucking Bitcoin moron. But with, like, a Democrat, it involves, like, a guy who makes fucking bullshit apps that don't work. It just, they they all do the same thing and want the same thing. It just involves, like, different different social components. Because, yeah, no, there's no, these are all essentially the same people.